It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at a pitch deck review, or a pitch deck rather, from Health Green. We're going to see um, what the pitch deck is all about, look at seven tips to a successful investment tech and see if they uh, follow all seven criteria for us being number one, are they going to identify the business plan goals? Number two, do they know their audience? Three, will they understand the market? Four, are they going to identify needs and roadblocks? Number five, do they know what sets the business apart? Six, will they introduce the team and products? And number seven, will they create a summary with a call to action? Let's find out. With us, Katrina Gogowski, angel investor and attorney. Thanks for being back on the talking page. Thanks, Josh. We're going to look at uh, cultivation, extraction, and exportation of cannabis via Green Health's pitch deck here. So they're a Colombian company born from the vision of a business group from the health sector that believes in medical cannabis as a business opportunity with the country economic growing and social impact through employment generation. Hmm. Laudable goals. Right off the bat, looking at the team. So founders, they got more than uh, two years in the cannabis industry. <laughs> hey, but one of them is a CPA, Josh. Come on. CPA, a lawyer, and an economist. All right. That's a definitely good trio there. Got technical director, some uh, engineers, analysts. I like that word, agronomical. Agronomical engineer. Mm-hmm. All right, so it looks like um, I'm assuming that these are some of the brands that they have. Not really sure here. There's a, just a slide here with a bunch of different um, names, and I'm assuming it's strategic partnerships or um, or brands that they've got. So the opportunity here with uh, Health Green uh, in Colombia is medical. So they're looking at uh, the U.S. Uh, equivalent of $5.9 million for international sales um, with 7.3, I'm assuming million hectares or a thousand, 7.3 thousand, 7,000 hectares. I don't know. <laughs> but they uh, assume that a lot of the production is going to go to Holland, Canada, Peru, Bolivia, Colombia, and then uh, using that 2018 farm bill to get into the U.S. Uh, I'm just a little concerned. Are they exporting or are they comparing the Colombian medicinal market to other <clears throat> countries? I, I, I don't know. Uh, let's, let's see, Josh. Yeah. And I'm also guessing that's 7,300 hectares. A dot is a comma, I think, in the U.S., maybe. Anyways, so they're, they're working with the Ministry of Justice and Law, Ministry of Health, um, all on the up and up to, to get their licenses. Uh, this is a very nice slide, which explains which licenses they need. It does not say that they have these licenses. Mm -hmm. So some of the locations and facilities, they have 30 hectares of land in um, in San Juan, Rio, San Juan de Rio. So they've got water and energy and uh, access roads. So that's good. They've got a plan to cultivate and extract, but it doesn't look like they were active at the point where they were making this deck. So they have... Um, some ideas of how many plants they want to grow and all of that <laughs> kind of looks like pre money. But this is very interesting here, Josh. Um, they have uh, 44,800 plants to, to plant. They have four, 4.48 4 plants per square meter. They are expecting 80 grams of output per plant, and they have a 90-day growth cycle. Uh, that is a very interesting statistic that is much shorter than uh, here in the U.S., which is a much longer growth cycle. So I wonder if that's their terra noir, 
or the fact that they have sun or, or what, but that's that those are interesting statistics. Um, I, I'd be interested to see what their actual production is. Mm -hmm. So here's some of their products. They have um, some CBD roll-ons and tinctures. It looks like um, isolates too, CBG, CBD isolate. Okay. Their target market and how they are uh, anticipating getting those customers. They have some international brokers in the US and Spain, some strategic alliances. They have a letter of intent, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, potential clients and an international marketplace. I think they put Kush up there for their international marketplace. That's uh, yeah, we, we know Kush very well. So potential value. So they're efficient cultivation plans. They have processes and certification. They have blockchain technology. So pre-money valuation, there it is. Saying it and I'm assuming this is an older deck because they can't really get away with that these days. This might be from 2019, I'm assuming. Um, looking for a series A, they're looking at for a 23% share Five hundred thousand dollars and a payback in thirty-three months with eight percent interest. So their pre-money valuation is set at seventeen million dollars. That's pretty high for not doing anything yet. But that is that is aspirational, Josh. And that's it. That is the end of it. So okay. let's see if they met our seven tips. To a successful investment deck. Number one, did they identify the business plan goals? Yes, um, they want to build out this facility. So yes, they did identify their goals. Do they know their audience, the investor audience? Yes. I'm going to give them a half a point here, Josh, because they did use all the catchphrases. Uh, they did touch on the licenses uh, and they did touch on some production level things, uh, but I'm gonna take away the other half of the point, Josh, because this, is, this does not appear from this deck to be an operational business, which gives investors great pause. This mm. is an idea. Do they understand the market? I think that they have an idea that indicates they have some knowledge of the market, but they did not give me enough to establish that they understood the market. So I can't give them a point there, Josh. All right. Identifying needs and roadblocks. They did identify their needs. Uh, specifically, they need a license. Um, specifically, they, they need this equipment and they need to build out the facility and they need the money to do that. So they did identify their needs they mentioned the license. So yes, um, they need everything, Josh. They do. Yeah, they could have laid it out a little bit more. Some of the issues they could have had trying to get into the US or even export. We've seen Canada and their national protectionism kind of blocking importations from Colombia. As a matter of fact, they could have said that, hey, Canada is not allowing us to, to uh, export to them. Um, outside of that, I mean, it didn't mention some. What about knowing what sets the business apart? I didn't see anything about competitors. I did not see any information of any sort related to a Colombian competitor. Uh, mm -hmm. And their competition slide that referenced Holland and Brazil and Bolivia um, was not clear. So I am going, I, I don't know if they were saying, um, you know, this is a, a total addressable market uh, slide or if this was a, um, uh, a point of entry for their import export aspect. The slide just was not clear. So Josh, I, I cannot give them a point. Um, and they didn't give any substantive information about what other people are doing in Colombia. Mm -hmm. um Number six, introducing the team and products. They did both. Was that enough to, to satisfy uh, for a full point? I like the team. Uh, they had two team slides. They had the executives and the, the 
uh, the frontline folks and they described what their skills were, what their background was. And of course we can Google them. So that I like that, that's one of my pet peeves. I wanna know who I'm writing a check to. Uh, so yeah, they get a point there. And then number seven, um, a call to action or summary, was their final slides enough to fulfill that? There certainly was a final slide. Uh, they did talk about uh, you know, pre-money valuation. They did talk about minimal investment and they did talk about what you will get for that minimal in, uh, minimum investment. So yes, uh, we, can, we can argue that their valuation was, was way too high uh, and uh, guaranteeing a payback in, in 33 months is always dangerous. So uh, they, they met the minimum requirement there, Josh. Uh, I would caution them going forward uh, to, to actually pay attention to those numbers because investors will. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's a four and a half out of seven. So that's a 64%. I guess if um, we wanted to recap their improvement, they could have um, maybe said a little bit more about the market uh, to, to kind of give the investor an idea that they understood not only the domestic, but the international market um, roadblocks could add those in without completely destroying your opportunities. Obviously you want to know what sets your business apart. Um, I think that's about it. Josh, I have a suggestion for green, uh, for health green. Um, and that suggestion is you are a Colombian company seeking United States investors. Mm -hmm. um, and what you want to do is somewhere in there, be it an appendix, uh, given the length of the pitch deck, uh, you want to advise your investor, you know, what's the exchange rate? If, if I give you a million dollars or $500,000, you know, there's, there's no context of how much that is in Colombian currency and what that 500,000 US dollars translates to. Also, there's no information about, do I need a lawyer? Uh, can I legally do this? And, and I, I understand that they don't wanna practice law, but uh, when you are an international company actively soliciting um, uh, funds from, from a US investor, a US investor is gonna have a lot of these questions. Uh, what are the tax consequences uh, of of this investment in, in a foreign country and am I going to have to pay capital gains and whether or not uh, you directly answer the question it's very helpful to say you know here's some accountants here's some lawyers who you can call to to find out this information um, something to to answer these baseline questions and we see this with international companies a lot Josh and the international folks would, would do well to, to provide some of this information, a link to a website, something um, to answer these questions. And that would be my uh, suggestion for any international company, Josh. But especially if you're pre-money, you have to do a little bit more work if you're pre-money and do some of the due diligence for your investor. Um, it to kind of give them a, a little bit of a teaser. Cause I mean, it's, if they came out with that deck in 2020 or even 2021, there's no way people are going to look at that. So that's why I'm assuming it could be from, you know, a year two two maybe three years ago. Um, but we are seeing some decks that still are pre-money in, in Latin America, um, on, on the uh, continent of Africa, uh, parts of Eastern Europe, uh, Madagascar, not Madagascar, um, I forget, uh, Macedonia. Um, get get a couple of decks out of there. So all over the place, really. Um, so this is a, a, a English as a second language or, or foreign deck that we see was really good. So 64% isn't bad. Um, just kind of want to put some more information in there, especially since you're pre-money to kind of help uh, those investors out. So all in all, decent deck. We've seen worse. We have seen worse. And if you're an investor out there listening, as opposed to an entrepreneur, uh, Danger, 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 pre-money. Uh, uh, an idea, it, it, it's tough to fund an idea. 
true it's that. extra tough to fund an idea in a foreign country. Absolutely. All right. Good time to roll this one up. I want to thank my guest, Katrina Gugowski, angel investor and attorney. Thanks for being back on the podcast. Thanks, Josh. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.